going to keep it moving right along. Next coming to the stage, we have Mr. Zach Finch. Zach Finch, where you at? Zach Finch? Party one, Zach Finch? Zach Finch? Bring it on up or you lose your spot, man. Zach Finch? All right, throw it up for him. We made it to the stage. Hey. Wow, thanks. I, I was nervous for a reason back there, I guess. Fuck, fuck me, yeah? Anyways, hello, McCormick's. All right. I'm Zach Finch. Uh, let me, let me do a little survey here. How many people are 26 or older and live with their parents? Give me a woo? No? Nothing? How many people are 26 or older and uh, have a friend that live with their parents? Or, and have a friend that's 26 or older and live with their parents? No? Anybody want a friend that's 26 or older and lives with their parents? <laughs> it gets kind of lonely there at 2 a.m. When they're passed out and you're smoking pot in their attic. <laughs> Let me tell you, you think it's some fucked up shit when you're sitting by yourself in their attic. Like, uh, like, uh, your high school's like a mile down the road and you're like, oh, man. what's going on with that kid? Oh, he killed himself. Oh, God damn. <laughs> shit. You know, I wonder what's in these kids. Why would you kill yourself? Is the, and not why would you kill yourself, but why would you kill yourself like in secret? You know? Now, I'm not thinking about killing myself, so let's just get that out of the way right there. Um, but if I were thinking of killing myself, I would want it to be epic and awesome. I would get trashed and, like, drive down the fucking road, you know, like, uh, like in the city block, just fucking causing all this collateral damage, smashing into mailboxes and, like, driving through buildings and shit like that, causing a ruckus so people wanted to come and see me and just, like, you know, well, it's the theatrical side of me, I guess. I graduated with a theater degree. And I would walk out of the fucking car, shotgun in hand, making sure that there are people to watch and film me on their iPhones and shit like that. And then I'd blast myself in the face with a shotgun. That... Is the only reason I would do that is uh, because of the funeral that I want to have, and that is an open casket Terminator funeral. <laughs> I want to be dressed in makeup, like the, where the shotgun holes in my face are. I want like a little Terminator eye, and fucking shards of metal, and so like, and the cat. And it's like a regular looking funeral home, you know, like uh, very nice and candles and nice, uh, you know, drapes or some shit. And if there's a casket and it's open. And I've got my Terminator face, and the music that's playing is like as people like file in, and some people are scared, other people are like, Zach, Zach, Zach couldn't have done a fucking Terminator. The only thing he could have terminated was a bag of Cheetos or a fucking kitten with cuddles. That's that's the only thing he could have terminated, that fucker, or a kitten by lifting up the recliner. What? On the chair, it snapped its neck. That, that's a true story. That's unfortunate. Kids are fat these days. Children are the the, the youth of America is fat, and I know because I'm a teacher. I work with these fat little fuckers. I know I'm fat too, and I can call them fat little fuckers because behind their back, I don't mind. That's fine because these little bastards will call you fat right to your face. They'll say, hey, Mr. Zach, you sure are fat. <laughs> and then they'll run away, flicking boogers at each other everywhere. <laughs> Fucking assholes. <laughs> and then this group of fat little kids rode their bike past my house one day, and I nudged my brother, and I go, hey, Nick, look. <laughs> Meals on wheels. <laughs> and he laughed so hard, and I started to feel bad. Not because I made fun of the kids, but because that's the nickname that my hipster pothead friends gave me when I tried to ride their fixies. <laughs> all right, that's uh, that's all I got. Thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> Keep your bar under. Zach Fish, everybody. Keep it up, Zach Fish. Yeah.
I just have to say, just talking about movies, I have to mention I saw an article on Yahoo the other day said that um, a lady was going to sue a movie theater because she went to see the movie Drive and she was pissed off that it wasn't like um, The Fast and the Furious with Vin Diesel. Like she thought from the trailers it was going to be like The Fast and Furious with Vin Diesel. And I found myself thinking, that's the first time I ever heard somebody suing somebody because a movie wasn't as shitty as they expected it to be. <laughs> Just wanted to say that. Next comes to the stage, we have a very funny man. Give it up for the cowboy of comedy, Mr. Roy Rogers! <laughs> Keep it going, we got a lady coming up to the stage. Uh, second female comedian of the night, Miss Eva D. Virginia. Yeah, thank you. Perfectly pronounced my last name. So, um, I called off my wedding, so I'm here in Richmond, thank you, um, and I'm, I'm trying to uh, look sexy, and, and I'm single now, so I've been bleaching my teeth, um, but it has made them so unbelievably sensitive, like last night I went out for a beer, and it was so cold, I had to put the beer between my thighs to warm it up, and use a straw up my nose. <laughs> <laughs> so, we should try it. Um, so I'm half Italian, half Irish. Everybody always thinks I'm all Italian, but I'm not. I'm half Italian, half Irish. Supposedly what happened when I was a baby, my Irish jeans were sopped up with a piece of bread and eaten by my Italian jeans. <laughs> so that's why I look this way. curly hair and the thing about um, when you have big curly hair it gets caught on everything like right now it's stuck on you oh, yeah. yes you Ow. nice so um, when I called off my wedding I had to you know move out of my fiance's place and find a new place so I was looking for all these um, you know where to live and I found this big house with a room and a bedroom and a, a bath. And so I went to check it out, and it was this guy who's 39, very successful man. And um, we hit it off right away, and he said, you know what, if you move in here, you don't even have to pay. Just take out the trash once in a while and, you know, clean up. So right away, I knew he was a pedophile. So I was like, oh, good deal, live with a pedophile, good deal, pedophile. So when I moved in, I, I noticed in the room there were all these like really weird stains all over the carpet of my room. And I, you know, I wanted to clean. So I was like, um, do you know what these stains are on your carpet? And he was like, oh, um, I rent my house out to a very exclusive invite only SM sex club. And where your bed is, there was a cage. And a girl was in it, and her name was It, and we can do anything we want to her. <laughs> so it's probably not high C then? <laughs> but I don't live there anymore. I don't. I live in my own apartment now. I basically thank you. It's a great feeling, and it's basically a retirement community. Yes. Yeah, you live there. Thank you. He lives there. Um, it's 88% retired old ladies. I am completely surrounded, and, and one gay man. Um, completely surrounded. And seriously, complete. Oh, two. Yes. He, oh, you too. Oh, sorry. I meant you like twice. So complete all old ladies. Okay, no, not a third. You're lying. Um, it's starting to worry me because um, I'm surrounded by these old ladies all the time. And then I went out on a date the other night with this guy, and he was this very, very good-looking guy, and he took me to Cine Bistro, and yeah, fancy. And um, he, so I wanted to tell him that he smelled really, really good. And so in the middle of the movie, and it was quiet, so I grabbed his arm, and I was like, what are they saying? What are the, I can't understand the word of the Syrian! Thank you guys. You guys are awesome. <laughs>
don't care if you laugh at my stuff or not. Because last time I did the show, last Saturday, I did it at a nudist resort. So, gentlemen, I just want to say thank you for being clothed tonight. That's, that's actually a big thing. It was a thing that we were told it had to be a family show because it is a family nudist camp. So I could see pussy, but I couldn't say it, which was kind of strange to me. Fortunately, I swear to God, it's true. Fortunately, there were no children in the show, so we were able to loosen up a little bit. The only awkward moment actually came after the show when the guy who kind of organized it, we go do the handshake, and he gives you one of those man hugs. I'm now hugging a naked man unexpectedly. That made it a little bit awkward. So that was it. I guess, okay, nothing, uh, nothing offensive happened. It was a good show. Uh, but that was it. <laughs> My nudist called me story. Uh, had to have the talk with my son the other day. You know, the talk. I sat him down, had charts and diagrams and everything else, and I sat him down and said, son, you're in high school and there's a few things you need to know. I'm gonna be straight with you. I know you have a lot of questions. When you graduate high school, I am kicking you out of the house. That is a fact of life. Look at this chart. This is how much you're costing me per month. This is how much work I'm getting out of you. Sorry, son, I love you, but you can ar not argue with the numbers. Times are tough, and you were being laid off from the family. <laughs> I know you're asking about college. I think college is very important, and we will help you pack, but we are not going to pay for it. I know you only have fair because your friends, their parents saved for their college. And you're right, that's not fair, because think of all they could have done with that money if they had been saving it for their kid. That's income redistribution, and Newt Gingrich said that's wrong, and he's a family values man, so... <laughs> that really screwed up, but uh, my parents screwed me up when I was a little kid. I was about five or six, and I asked them where babies come from, and they said, when a man and woman love each other, they get married, and God gives them a baby. But we know that's not how it works. We know babies come from sex. You don't have to love each other to have sex. In fact, some of the best sex I've ever had has been with women I didn't even particularly like. <laughs> so I spanked that ass. I'm like, all right! I really enjoyed that. Probably more than I should. But uh, I just had this image, and all you had to do was love the person, and they got pregnant. Can you imagine it really worked that way? Ladies would be like, don't say it, David. Don't say it. I love you, Lisa. God damn it, David! Shit! But anyway, that's how I, how I thought it happened. And we had a neighbor girl who got pregnant. This was scandalous. This was 1972. Legal abortions had not been invented yet. And uh, so my, I'm thinking, how can this happen? She's not married. I very clearly remember my parents saying they had to be married. You know, she didn't make a mistake. God screwed up. She should go to church and take it back. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but my, I'm thinking, my sister said, my sister said, look, he looks at me and goes, you don't have to be married to get pregnant, stupid. And now all of a sudden I'm worried. Now I think all I gotta do is love somebody. And in Sunday school they taught us to love everybody, but they never said what the limit is. <laughs> like how much do I love somebody before they get pregnant? I don't know. I wouldn't tell my mom I loved her for like six months. She's like, Jim, why don't you say you love me anymore? I'm like, Jesus, mom, I'm six. I do not need that kind of responsibility. <laughs> I kissed a girl in first grade. I broke out in a rash. And I would thought for sure that's what did it. I just broke the limit, right? I'm at home at six checking the classified job. My dad's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm looking for a job. Daddy goes, why? I go, I don't want to talk about it, Dad, but I'm going to make it all right. Okay, I'm going to make it right. <laughs> next, day, next day, I go to school. I see her kissing another boy. I'm like, you slut. Now we know who the baby belongs to. <laughs> My name's Jim Stewart. Y'all been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Just so everybody, a lot of money up here on the stage.